Hey STEM friends, Tyler Reichs here again with another awesome STEM activity for you. I'm really excited about this one. Today we're gonna be uh, making a Pong game with our Sphero robot. So I called it Sphero Pong. Ta da! Uh, so what we're gonna do today, uh, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go over the history of the Pong game in case some of you youngins may not know what that is. Super fun. Um, then we're gonna go over the code for the Pong game specifically, uh, we're gonna introduce an on collision event, and then we're also going to introduce variables, which we haven't done before. So that's gonna be really cool. And then uh, we're gonna test it out, see if I'm a Pong master, see how good I am at this game by myself. And then uh, we are going to go over some extra challenges. So I'm super excited, like I said. Um, actually wanted to give a shout out to my friend Cole. Uh, he kind of uh, messaged me about this activity and we kind of collaborated and figured out um, some cool versions, some cool edits uh, to do on this program. So uh, shout out to Cole, hope you like this. Alrighty, so uh, before we get into the code, I kind of wanted to, uh, for maybe those who aren't familiar with Pong, show the gameplay and how we're going to, or how the Sphere is going to act um, or what we'll be coding for. Uh, so, a little bit of history about Pong. It was created by Atari in 1972. Um, if you guys thought Fortnite and Minecraft were popular, you should have seen this game back in its heyday. Ridiculous. But anyways, let's uh, let's get to it. So I think I'll be the thing on the right. This works. Oh wow, quick one point gone. All right, here we go. So the Sphero Ball will be this little dot. And I'm on the right, if you didn't notice. And then you and a partner will either use your hands or your feet, and those will act as the blocks. And then the Sphero is going to get faster as we go. Wow, we're on a roll. Oh, I scored. Let's go. Tiebreaker. All or nothing, baby. Let's go. Oh, that was lame. All right, well, so now you know how it's gonna work. Let's get into the code, STEMstronauts. Get it, astronauts, STEM people. That was a dumb joke. Anyways, <laughs> so like I said in the beginning, uh, you can kind of even see it right here. Um, when we go over the code, we're gonna go over the on collision event um, variables, and there's a couple other things that are new that we should probably go over. Um, so. Opposite to the last, the Magic 8-Ball video where the Magic 8-Ball video looked complicated, but it wasn't complicated. This one doesn't look that complicated, but it is a little more complicated. So, let's get into it. Um, so, we'll start off with the on start program. Once you click start, the on start event will run. We'll change the main LED to blue, delay for one second. We're going to speak, 3, 2, 1, Pong. Woohoo! And then we're going to set our first variable starting speed to 50. Um, the max speed you can go on a Sphero is 255. If you saw uh, the repost of, by Sphero, uh, the Thursday Learn Day that I posted last Thursday, um, or um, just any Thursday, I guess, depending on when you're watching this, it was on a Thursday. Uh, you'll know that the speed only can go up to 255 because of the bytes uh, that are uploaded onto the Sphero. So check that video out if you're curious and want to know more. Um, so we set the starting speed to 50. Uh, if the, our turn variable, which is our second variable that we have in here, is equal to 1, then we set the starting speed to our starting variable, our starting speed variable to the speed uh, to start. Um, if the turn is not equal to 1, aka if it's anything past 1, after 1, uh, we will set the speed to our raise speed variable, which gets set um, down here, um, and we'll get into this uh, as we get into our on collision event. So here's the other thing that we wanted to go over, on collision. So once the Sphero hits a wall, preferably it will be, um, well hopefully it's not a wall if you're playing this game right. Uh, it'll be your hand, or maybe even your foot. Oh, wow, that was tough. Um, it'll sense a collision, and then it'll run this program, which is pretty cool. Uh, so it's going to sense a collision. 
it's going to stop, delay for 0.1 seconds, and it's going to set the turn variable that we had. It's going to increment it by 1, so it's going to add 1 to it. So um, once it hits, it's going to add 1, so the first time it'll be 1, and then it'll hit, and it'll be 2, and then it'll hit again, and it'll be 3, and it'll just go on and on and on. And then this is where we get real funky. Okay, so follow along closely. Um, we enter into this if statement with our turn variable, and this is a modulus operator, a modulo operator, however you want to call it. A lot of people just say modulus. Um, and that basically just finds the remainder between two numbers. So we're going to find whatever number is uh, turn is set to, uh, we're going to find the remainder of that if you divide it by 2. Um, and if it's equal, if the remainder is equal to 1, then we'll run this first part of the if block. But if it's not a remainder of 1, aka if, it's, if there's no remainder, then we'll run this else uh, part of the if block. So let's say if the turn is 2, we'll take 2 divided by 2. Is it there a remainder of 1? No. Then we'll go down here. Let's say it's turn three. We'll take three divided by two. Is there a remainder of one? Yes, there is. So then we'll go to this part. So let's say we're on turn three. We take uh, three divided by two. That gets us a remainder of one. Then we enter into here. That changes the main LED to green. And then we change the heading. So the heading is the uh, direction in degrees that the sphere is going to go. So if you think of a sphero ball laying on the ground, it can go in three, 360 degrees, whatever direction you want it to go. Um, so we're going to set that direction in degrees. Think of uh, 180 degrees, oh, there we go, is like the top, and then like zero is at the bottom, and 90, and then 360, or I'll switch it, 90. 360, 360's down here, 270, God, this is a mess. Anyways, um, so we're setting it basically to have go in a random direction between these two numbers um, on like the little degree scale. So we'll set the heading, the random int, to go back the other way once it has a collision between the degree points 170 and 190. So it could be 177, it could go straight back 180 degrees. Um, you'll kind of get the hang of that as you play and understand really what that does. Um, so the else part of this is the same thing once it collides. If there's no remainder of 2, or when you divide by 2, then we'll set the main LED to blue. And then um, instead of having the heading go uh, 170 to 190, we'll have it go the other way. Uh, negative 10 to 10 so it'll be kind of like a random uh, degree point uh, direction telling uh, the sphero ball which way to go so that's how we're going to get the random um, basically the when the ball hits the paddle and pong it'll go like out or down or up or straight across that's how we get those random movements and then uh, after this is, if statement gets run we will raise the speed with our raise speed variable to uh, we'll increment it by 10. So every time a turn happens, every time this code gets run, we'll raise the speed by 10. So instead of 50, it'll be the speed will be set to the raise speed, which will be 60. And then once it collides again, it'll be 70, and then 80, and then 90, and it'll keep on going all the way up to 250. So that's pretty much it. Like I said. This doesn't look as complicated, but it can be a little confusing, so definitely go through it slowly. Take a Check out the sensor data, it'll help you kind of understand um, what the sphere is taking in, the data, and uh, explain or give you a better look or add more color to um, what this code is actually doing. So uh, without further ado, let's go try this out. Let's go. I'm excited. Alright, so let's see this Pong game in action. I have the Sphero ball right here, I don't know if you can see it. And uh, the Pong barriers are gonna be on the free throw line and uh, baseline. So let's start the program. I'm just gonna run back and forth and hopefully this works. Three, two, one Pong. 
way. So it starts off slow. Gets the collision. Comes back. Gets the other collision. Alright. Oh yeah, it's going a little faster now. See how the color's changing? Here we go. Oh boy. It's coming over here. And there you have it. The yards don't have to be as far away. As you can tell, it's going a little faster. Oh, it's coming all the way over here now. All right, I'm done, I'm letting it roll. All right, STEM Pirates. Uh, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I have a couple challenges for you here that I'm gonna go over. Um, I think they'd be really fun. Um, they, uh, I think they'll be kind of, kind of hard, but we'll see. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, the first one is going to be, uh, can you have the Sphero keep score for you? So maybe every time it collides with something, it uh, yells out the updated score, or or for that player, um, or maybe just at the end it says who wins. Um, whatever, whatever works. Um, it would be really hard because you have to be able to know um, when like the person misses the ball. So, um, something to think about, it's challenging. Uh, the second challenge is gonna be, uh, can you make the Sphero go in, uh, go, go at random speeds? So essentially, uh, instead of it always getting faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, can you have it maybe go super fast and then super slow and kind of test your luck, have like a random speed, uh, uh, catch in there. Uh, and then the last one, as always, check out the sensor data. See what the data tells you. See what the Sphero is collecting as it's um, hitting your foot or your hand or moving speeds and stuff like that. Um, it's just always really interesting to see like the path it goes and what it's able to track. So, um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'll see you guys later. Enjoy the coding. Enjoy STEM. I love y'all.